Today, we are fortunate to have Dr. Fatma El Hashem as our speaker. She's an assistant professor at Gulf University for Science and Technology. Uh, she served as the chair for the Center of Teaching, Learning, and Research, and that was from 2018 to 2021. Her doctoral degree is in curriculum and instruction in science education from Arizona State University. So you can see that she brings a strong academic background to her work. Dr. Fatma is a strong advocate for supporting teachers in general and supporting women in science education in specific. She's been involved in many different projects that serve educational systems, mainly clustered around teachers' development. She's held, pre, uh, previously, she's held positions uh, with the United Nations Development Program, UNESCO, and Kuwait Foundation for the Advancement of the Sciences. Uh, I hope that you will enjoy this today as much as I did when I sat in this seminar at Gust, and there were several of us that go, oh, she's got to get this for Tisal Kuwait. It's fantastic. So with that said, welcome, Dr. Fatima. The floor is yours, or I guess the screen is yours. Yeah, that too. Good morning, everyone. Um, Fatima from Kuwait. I am pleased that you know, with this big number that gives me a big, you know, responsibility to deliver this uh, lecture today. I don't like to lecture. I prefer interactive. And we're talking today about interactive uh, session and how we can create a, um, a dynamic environment in our classrooms. So allow me to share my screen. Okay, share the screen. Okay, share. And then we have our, excuse me, let me just put it as a display. All right. So today we're talking about interactive teaching and teaching English as a second language. So when we define, you know, uh, when we define, wait a second, I'll just put things in order. When we want to define interactive teaching, it's an approach that prioritizes active engagement. It's a two-way communication and active participation between teacher and students. So uh, with the lecture type or if we have if we come across classrooms where I used to teach at classrooms where I ended up with 35 students and it used to be a heavy load for me teaching uh, classes back to back. However, forgetting the aspect of interactive teaching would cost more effort than you know, lecturing to students and assuming that you delivered the curriculum. And we will discuss that later on. Another thing is that, oopsie. All right, we need to understand the principles of interactive teaching. Just, I wanna note, I wanna note something here since it's recorded. If my, my dog, barks i apologize because he's super active so um i hope he doesn't and he does he will behave but sometimes he get triggers by the other cats in the house so going back to interactive teaching the principles uh student engagement to way communication and active participation and when we want to talk about student engagement it uh, involves the caption students interest creating motivation, in a, whether it's, uh, if they come with intrinsic motivation, it would be wonderful. But if they come with no motivation, then you have as a teacher to create a, 
uh, external or intrinsic motivation to grab their attention and to engage them in the lesson. And that usually takes place in the beginning of the class. Another thing is that the two-way communication fosters open dialogue, which encourages students to speak and talk in the classroom, whether among themselves as students uh, and when you divide them in groups, or uh, between you, uh, the teacher, and the students themselves. Um, another uh, principle in interactive teaching is the active participation. When the students are almost silent in your 40 minute classroom, that's an indicator that there is no engagement and there is no uh, participation. And that will create a question mark about where is the interactive teaching. So you want to make sure that the active participation, there is a sound. If, if you pass by a a classroom where you only hear the voice of the teacher, then you would like, okay, where is the student involvement? Another advantage of uh, interactive teaching for English as a second language for students, ESL students that improved the language skills. I mean, I am now taking some French courses and believe it or not, I am 43 years old and I just feel like, oh my God, is that how, little children face when they are exposed to a new language. The way you want to pronounce the, the vowels, you don't want to make mistakes, you watch yourself. And as you do that, as you do that, you create, you know, there is a tension when you are trying to deliver the, the language. So sometimes you forget even the idea that you want to talk about. So imagine me as an adult trying to do that and putting yourself in the chair of the student. So always remember to put the hat of the students like, are they going to be comfortable? Will they be encouraged to talk? So improving language skills doesn't come, you know, without interaction. And with interaction, there is a, a degree of fear that we need to pay attention to. Uh, another thing is that the greater retention of information. Whenever you are engaged and you practice the, uh, you know, the vocab, the sentences, the suffix, the more it is crafted in your, in the child's brain. And that will also help students to memorize it by practicing it and engaging in it. Uh, enhance critical thinking skills coming from another language and talking in, into another language will create more variety and more expansion of knowledge. We come with a different culture when we speak in Arabic and sometimes we have those uh, expressions or a culture aspect that is not in the English. And with the interaction, the growth of languages, both whether the first language or the English as a second language, the interaction will create a different uh, or stimulate the critical thinking and solve the problem and engaging and bringing your your own culture to the language that you're speaking. So this is also an important aspect. Teaching English as a second language will also teach you more as a teacher to understand other dimensions. Interactive teaching techniques nowadays are like, you are really, we are really lucky to be in the, uh, uh, fourth uh, industrial revolution because with the fourth industrial revolution attaining and getting the, the resources the techniques can be clicked on google you can search whatever you want you can customize what you need and you can uh, um you know 
create activities, pull out good worksheets, all of these things are now in, uh, in, in your hand as a teacher. Whereas like, let's say 20 years ago, we had to go and do photocopying and Xeroxing all the papers and make sure sometimes we laminate the paper so we can use it for other classes. But these things can be, you know, um, wiped out of our memory because now with the, let's say, gazillion tools that we have. So uh, the interactive teaching here, I'm just gonna skim them and I will point out to things that are worth discussing. So uh, role plays and stimulation, encourage students' life scenarios. These are very important. Peer teaching. We have a zone of approximate development in, uh, in every child. Uh, and this goes to Vygotsky, uh, a uh, educational psychologist. He actually believed that engagement in uh, group work will stimulate children. And they have a closer zone of approximate development compared to the teacher who is superior, older, so they learn from each other. So matching students is very important. Sometimes when we match students, we mismatch them. The chemistry is not there. There is a, a student who does not fit with the other. So we need to always monitor our groups, whether they are blended, where everybody's active and nobody's silent. So you want to do that. Uh, also collaborative projects, projects in class projects is very important. And I'm talking here about, let's say, because I, I get involved into the government uh, sector schools a lot in Kuwait, I see the projects being done outside the classroom. Um, I believe that collaborative uh, projects should take place within the curriculum, within the classroom settings, and could be uh, practiced uh, with the teacher. Games, now the games are the new tools for educators. They've noticed that with games, the brain is stimulated to learn and motivated more than being in the traditional setting. Uh, storytelling, we always like anecdotes and storytellings, even at this age. I mean, I sometimes enjoy whenever they announce any Disney movie, I'm like, yay, I'm going. So there's like, there's this spirit that as a human nature, we love storytelling. So don't neglect that even with the advanced technology and techniques. Uh, role rotation, they have to have a role rotation. There are a lot of students who are silent in our classroom and whenever they speak, they are a superstar. So we want to bring them out of their shell slowly by, you know, taking roles from within the classroom. Uh, also, uh, scenarios and problem solving, uh, judge so reading, uh, as you know, as an English teacher, picture-based activity, of course, when they match the picture, that would be for young age, but never, never would be for uh, elderly too. Uh, online quiz, quizzes, nowadays you can create with Kahoot and all of these things. Uh, language exchanges, uh, if you are a native language, uh, English uh, speaker, then you wanna bring their, um, uh, in any activity on how they pronounce the word, whether in Arabic or another language, because that will make them feel confident that the teacher is also learning my language and that will encourage them to speak out and to talk. Uh, music, songs, trust me, even in science lessons, I still remember uh, knowing the uh, planets in English. My very excellent mother just served us nine pizzas, Mercury, Venus, uh, Earth, um, 
Mars and so on. So these anecdotes will stick in the brain and will make sure that teach uh, the students will will remember them. Uh, story building also will create their imagination. Like if you start one sentence and they have to to continue, that will give them some of the freedom to speak out and will give you their prior knowledge on how they think about things differently. Uh, video clips, multimedia nowadays, I'm saying you guys are lucky. We didn't have that when we taught. Now I am using it in college level, but I'm almost like, oh, how lucky because bringing a video to classroom, it was like pulling a whole TV, a whole television with the video and installation. It took like a preparation of like half an hour before the class starts. Um, with no internet, of course. Uh, guest speakers, uh, in inviting, you know, guest speakers, uh, involve involvement of parents also, uh, field trip or virtual tools. Now with the virtual tools, you can visit even museums, uh, task-based learning, and think, pair, share. When you ask, ask a question and you pair it up and then they discuss their own thoughts. Now, I've talked about the general ways, but now I want to specify it with technology. When we talk about technology nowadays, we don't want to enforce technology. We want to utilize technology. Utilizing technology is totally different from uh, in, enforcing technology. Uh, enforcing technology meaning you as a teacher and the technology and the curriculum, but who's left behind? The student. Uh, a lot of school ad admin, unfortunately, they are obsessed with the use of technology or let's uh, add a video, a clip or anything, but sometimes you feel like a hands-on project will be more effective than using the technology. Don't, then don't use the technology, use the hands-on and provide rationality for the school admin that a certain age or certain activity needs to be done interactively without technology, just the student and the tools that they have the hands on, whether it's a worksheet or writing. So going back to technology, we need to rationale why are we using it and when to use it. So using technology needs to be done by the teacher and her strategies. Of course, with the utilities in the schools, you, you don't want to you know, put an effort in providing all the tools. Uh, so based on what the school is providing, you want to improve technology. Um, one thing is that nowadays you can help the student with the um, interactive language uh, software. So these programs can give feedback and provide, you know, uh, um, correct pronunciation for students. Uh, help them to increase their vocabulary and understanding, and they measure it for you, and they can give you a report. Also, online language platform, such as Duolingo. I use Duolingo with my phone all the time. It stimulates me. It gives you points. Uh, it helps you to speak, and it will help students to do things outside the classroom setting. And there are some good lessons and storytelling inside the app. So I encourage teachers to look into Duolingo because it's really helpful for students. Another thing is that, you know, um, 
practices such as, you know, uh, Babel for additional practice. Uh, we have also for advanced, uh, more engaged students, Khan Academy. They have a lot of lessons for teachers. Uh, we have the virtual reality, and uh, it's not only for, let's say, science and math, but also for language where they live the scenario and they can interact with the learning language experience. So they need to be familiarized. And now our, our students are actually not mismatched between their home environment and their school environment. They're actually utilizing their technology uh, everywhere. We are, I call them the digital children because they were born in digital uh, medium. They grew up with smartphones and tablets and all these things and the applications. Now, this is like the, the let's say, nowadays we are relying on applications more than ever. ever. Uh, I do most of my uh, e-government uh, work through the applications. And by default, our our children are growing up and opening their eyes with these tools. So um, matching these things is also good for them because technology is not a bad tool. It's how you utilize it. So sometimes people would have like, they would create a big fuss about TikTok. I would like, okay, TikTok is bad whenever you choose bad followers or so. But in in same time, I've learned a lot of techniques. I'm, I sometimes cook, so this is another thing about me. And I, I wanted to have some techniques and I followed those cooks and the chefs and they do, and I was able to learn by, by this visual technique. So understanding the, and the cause of the application. So we can always utilize it for better purposes. Interactive language software, virtual reality, and also multimedia content. Um, in large classes, sometimes you need to have a multimedia content that will help you to deliver the lesson. You don't want to lecture all the time. You want them to be uh, engaged in a video clip, and then they answer a question for you, and then you collect the the data or the feedback from their students to see their understanding. So using these things will help you to deliver more content and more, let's say, more control uh, variables that you have in your hand as a teacher to utilize all of that. Virtual language exchange Nowadays, there are a lot. My, my daughter is learning Spanish and now she talks to, uh, you know, native uh, Hispanic people and, and they help her and they give her techniques and they share with her some expressions. So it's beyond, beyond the language itself. So there are a lot of applications where they match you with the native language speaker and they speak. So that could be done for, let's say, uh, high school level and beyond, not uh, early, early childhood or middle childhood education. So with these ways, um, we need to understand also the online collaborative tools. Uh, when when we want to know, you know when we want to um, deliver more, let's say for low achievers, and you want their, you want this uh, to provide support for their parents. Google Doc, Google Slides, Microsoft Teams can always be a tool for you. Uh, don't think about the school now as the bricks that surrounds the school itself. Now the school is beyond with uh, the online collaborative tools. 
uh, you can deliver more activities for those who need help. You can provide extra support with extra uh, activities and tips for parents to improve the, uh, and coach uh, the students to, uh, to achieve the uh, proficiency in English. Uh, language learning games, they are amazing. Kahoot, everybody's involved. I mean, trust me, even at college level, if I say Kahoot, I see the big smile on their faces and they're like, what, in their 20s? And still they are enjoying it. So doing these things will always indirect empower students to be involved. The language learning apps uh, also like, you know, uh, Burmese, Anki, and Quizlet will help for vocabulary practice, will create flashcards. They have a lot of uh, tools for teachers to distribute. They have a, let's say, a partially psychometric uh, uh, and good question banks for teachers that you can pull and deliver for your students. So you can customize them, you can uh, improve them, you can um, match them with your curriculum to deliver a lesson. Uh, also, we have the online language communities and um, where you know you can join, as I said, uh, forums nowadays. And then you can, you know, uh, help the student to be involved. Um, the only thing that you need to be extra careful that whenever you want to do these activities, you want to make sure it is safe and there is no scam or nothing that will harm students. So getting a consent form and making sure that the platform is safe before involving in any activity with strangers, especially strangers and adults and young children. So you wanna make sure that this is a very safe environment for students. Also, the interactive whiteboards. Nowadays, I mean, with, with me and when I teach and guest, I don't have any whiteboard, uh, the regular whiteboard anymore. I'm always using my interactive whiteboard. I see the students how they um, they adapt very quickly, which surprised me as a person who was, you know, seeing the expansion of using the internet from the 90s until nowadays. Seeing those children, they are really fast. And their, and their patient level is very short. Uh, if you want to test their patient level, uh, think about the YouTube app, uh, ads. The YouTube ads is just like, it takes up to what? 10 to 15 se seconds or, and you will see that you just want to skip that ad. But for us in the nineties, it took us like half an hour to connect to the internet and we were patient and we did not argue. It's like, okay, now I'm going to do the process of connecting the internet and we wait. But our children nowadays, their capacity of patient is really low. So you want to understand that those children, they don't have the capacity as us. Utilizing technology will, will not let them feel the boredom that they feel in whenever we involve them in tradition. I mean, grabbing their attention to talk for what, for 45 minutes, you'll see that the, the daydreaming in their eyes, you, you know what they're, they are daydreaming about going out or leaving the classroom. I have some tips and advices for you. Us as a teacher, I start with myself before everyone. Creating a positive learning environment. Excuse me, just I want to have a sip of water. Yeah, so excuse me. So have create a positive learning environment 
is really important. If there is no, if there is a fear, there is no learning. If there is any discomfort, there is no learning. So work on that the first week of classes, get to know your students, know their fear, know, know their prior knowledge, all of that. Set clear learning goals. It's very important that you set the clear learning goals. Otherwise, they don't know why they're studying this. So in my writing class, they will write three types of essays, but I would tell them, okay, those essays, we'll practice them here, but you will apply them and expand them in your majors. You, and for those who are going to work in accounting, you will write reports. You need these techniques. You need to be argumentative when you are in visual communication and talk about protecting people's rights and so on. So creating these goals will give the students an, an indirect engagement, like, okay, I'm learning this because one day I'll practice it. Make learning relevant. Don't do something that, I mean, if I live in Mungov, don't don't create a scenario in New York. They've never seen New York. They are in Slebihat or Mungov. They've never seen something like that. So don't don't do the mismatch. Introduce other cultures, but don't don't neglect their relevant home environment. Also provide constructive feedback. You need to encourage, you need to show them where they are and the path for their improvement. Encourage self-expression. Again, that goes to the tip number one, creating positive learning environment will allow them to express themselves. Other than that, if they come with fear, they will always have this indecisive feeling toward answering any question from your side. Use authentic materials. Don't create something out of the out, out of their, let's say, settings. Uh, let's create it from their own environment. Uh, promote peer interaction, always peer inter interaction. Again, students learn from each other. That's an educational psychology theory that we indirectly work it on and practice it on our uh, classrooms. Vary the teaching methods. Even if the classroom size is big, try to uh, mobilize your techniques and distribute them among activities slash time slash and someone is having the control and typing on the screen. All right. <laughs> yeah, so um, promote uh, peer interaction, vary the technique, uh, the teaching methods technique, make sure they are involved, make sure that there is dynamic. Do not use only, for example, even if Kahoot is a nice electronic tool, don't overuse it that people and the students will be bored. So keeping things away and trying to have a different techniques will always make the students wonder, oh, how will I be engaged in this? And some students will feel comfortable to do such activity in such way. So distributing it, distributing the teaching methods will always bring the the uh, the strength and the power among the students will give you the insight where are their weaknesses is it in listening is it in um, talking is it in writing and then you can work it uh, work on uh, bridging the gap um, also set achievable challenges do not over challenge them do not give them something too easy that you that they underestimate this 
uh, course and they all pass, but with no learning uh, accomplishment. So you want to make sure you increase the difficulty as you progress in the semester. Also, you want to celebrate the achievements. Whenever they, whenever they do something, you want to recognize it. They are learning another language. And a lot of them, their parents don't speak the second language properly. So you don't want to miss the opportunity of in the encouragement through celebrating the achievement. Whenever they accomplish a project, you will throw a party in the class. You will give like an early dismiss or play a basketball together and do any activities that will make them feel like, okay, what is going to be next? So we will celebrate another achievement. Be patient and supportive. Being patient is not an easy, especially when we come, uh, and this is my say to be novice and beginner teachers, uh, coming with, you know, coming with, oops, sorry. Excuse me, just one second. I'm so sorry. So, um, uh, so be patient and supportive. Uh, doesn't come uh, that easy. I mean, some students come with a lot of emotional and a lot of uh, psychological backgrounds that needs more effort than just to deliver your curriculum. They come with emotional, uh, you know, uh, problems such as like uh, peer pressure, um, uh, a, a member, uh, they lost a member in their family, or they have a, pro a social problem, like uh, the parents are going through the divorce and so they, they lack the motivation because of a psychological issue or emotional issue taking place in the house. So you want to be patient and supportive. And do not involve beyond being a teacher. Just work it out within what you have within the classroom. And also you, you want to refer to the counselor, the school counselor, make sure that you know the case of the student very well. Uh, some of them, they come with ADHD and they have this hyper. So you want to not to discourage them or label them or place them in a corner that they are a the, the nightmare of the classroom. Involve them will, in, will decrease their case of, uh, let's say the um, they're hyper they're they once once they are in, engaged and they are next to you and they are involved they will by default especially let's say early middle childhood they want to please people they want to they want to feel that they are part of it so make them part of it takes a lot of patience from us uh, provide additional resources. As I said, now I've noticed that the Ministry of Education in Kuwait obliged all teachers to activate their Microsoft Teams account, and now they have to help students in getting the extra materials through it. So don't take it as a negative thing. And oh, I have to work from home because as teachers, we always work from home, whether we like it or not, we are indirectly thinking about the lesson that we're going to deliver to, uh, tomorrow, or we are engaged in grading textbook or planning for an activity or uh, working as a team to deliver a project for student success. So, um, I'm not saying drain yourself by answering all the teacher, uh, all the parents, and all the uh, the requirements, but try to create a set of uh, activities for low achievers, 
for high achievers to motivate them or advance them. All these things, if you have them, it will build up a good package that delivers with one click to parents. Uh, encourage self-assessment. Ask the students to assess themselves. Diagnostic assessment could be used as a tool. You show them where they are and you show them the progress. And then you ask them where they see themselves and what are the weaknesses that they have. By the time, if you encourage them, they will come and they will tell you, teacher, I have a problem in this. Sir, I have a problem with that. Can you help me with this? So um, also individualized instructions. I teach three classes, all English 100. I know that the students in 9 a.m. are totally different from 11 and are totally different from the 1 p.m. Class. I cannot deliver the same material. I am delivering the same material, but I have to customize it. I gave them two diagnostic tests and I graded them and I'm like, oh, hmm, those students, they have good here, but the others, no, they need more extra work. So within the three classes, I deliver things differently within this same curriculum, but they are not exactly the same. So try to build your tools. I always give this tip to my student teaching class. I am before going to the practicum, the, practicum, uh, I, the year be, uh, or the semester before, I would, me and the team in the department, we would work in building their capacity. The more tools you have as a teacher, the better instructions, the better management of the classroom you'll have. And you will be able to control the, the classroom setting. And once you can control it by having the tools to deliver for low achievers, middle, high achievers, and all these things, you will have a better mechanism on delivering the uh, lesson more easily when you have no tools. You are just like going to a war, a war of ignorance to enlighten those students about a new knowledge. So you have to have the tools. You can't go the, to the settings without no tools. So more tools, more smart tools will help you to deliver the best practices with minimum time. Uh, involvement of parents and guardians is really important. Parents play a vital role in student success. They are the core. They come from their home environment, either fragile or confident. It depends. And we see the reflection of our society through our students. So bringing as uh, parents is very and highly important. <laughs> also provide culture insights. Again, I am Kuwaiti. I know students, they love in February to celebrate the national and the celebrations of Kuwait. They wear these things, the customs. Ramadan would be a very wonderful expression to learn a new vocabulary. Mm -hmm. uh, about their own religion or their own I, culture and practice. I, uh, I love that kid who's involving with me the lecture. And um, hello. <laughs> um, provide and maintain the growth of mindset. Um, compare them from where they started to the end and you'll see the growth of their vocabulary and their confidence in practicing the language. Also uh, offer support services. When you connect students with support services, the council, if they have difficulties that you cannot uh, achieve or deliver or work it out in the classroom, there are a lot of uh, aids in the, in, the, in the school that will 
abilities that help you to accomplish that. Don't hesitate as a teacher to seek that. Uh, always keep the, your head of department involved. Uh, fight those cases that uh, have, you know, uh, chronologies such as diabetes or heart or anything. Always mark them down. So that would be an evidence that you know your students. Um, also, create a sense of belonging. I mean, today I feel so disconnected from my audience. I don't like to lecture. That's why I'm like trying to give you the sense that you guys are connected. Um, I introduce you to my dog who barks randomly. My cat is like almost attacking me, but I'm pushing him with my legs. Um, I like to give that part of me to my students, not giving them the, my personal details of my life, but I, I give them the sense that they are comfortable to speak up. Whenever they feel comfortable to speak up, they will feel comfort comfortable to learn. And this is the most important thing. Uh, seek feedback. Uh, we are, we need to know that we're not just delivering one, it's a two-way communication. I learn a lot from my students. Uh, also, seeking their feedback, they sometimes, they would tell me this activity was too difficult or this activity was this and that. So I'm like, okay, I reflect back and I try to improve my uh, exercises, my quizzes, the way I deliver the models. Uh, every course I look into my materials and I'm like, is that enough? No, now with chat GBT, for example, I forbid any essays to be done outside the classroom. We do it as a price, slice it down during the semester. And now they are doing it in the classroom under my site. Uh, we have a safe exam browser, for example, where they cannot cheat or seek the internet. So I know they wrote it by themselves and they've submitted so I can um, evaluate their grammar, their spelling, their, uh, their sentence structures freely without having the fear or the, that the, the students uh, cheated or they tried to plagiarize a material or use the AI. I don't ban them from using the AI in certain activities because again, I want my students to utilize those knowledge for their benefit, but as they utilize this knowledge without having a prior knowledge or having a constructive knowledge about the English will make them feel even uglier because they don't know what the chat GPT, for example, provided them. So opening up to the students and understand that they are born in a very complex or they are growing in a very complex dimension doesn't make you doesn't uh, make you want to kill this opportunity but customize it understand it you practice it out so you know how to teach it while teaching the language is highly important uh, being stubborn and stick to the traditional method won't get you anywhere now Remember, we as a teacher, we as teachers, we need to know that we have three components. We have content knowledge that we always need to update ourselves with. You cannot be a page ahead of your student with in terms of knowledge. We have a pedagogical skills that I've overview today. This is one technique of interactive uh, teaching. And we have the technological aspect that is also part of our lifestyle today, and we cannot neglect it. Go into classroom knowing that your students are way advanced than you, needs, need, makes you wonder, how can I improve my skills in technology? So always try to balance those three in you as a teacher. 
to produce the best teaching for your students. Thank you so much. I try to deliver in almost 50 minutes so I can open freely for the interaction. Just Thank you, Dr. Fatma. Uh, if you can either open your microphone and ask Dr. Fatma your question, or you can type it in the chat and she will see it. For those okay. of you who were not paying attention to the presentation, what, but were busy typing, how do I get my certificate? <laughs> Zoom has a record, uh, records your name that you're here. It also records the amount of time that you hear. And then on Sunday and Monday, you will receive uh, your certificate and it will be sent to the uh, address that you registered with. And um, so you have to have been here 45 minutes, but Zoom will let us know. Thank you. Okay, yeah. open question. And I apologize for my, uh, he was not behaving very well, so. Now uh, he was very the... quiet. I didn't hear yeah. him. Well, he barked once. <laughs> okay, any questions either? Ask I your see question. Sarah raising her hand. Sarah, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So uh, I am uh, I'm done with my bachelor degree and I have the last semester, which is a training, uh, the practical, which is in schools. I'm teaching now. Um, I had my first class on Tuesday. It was for grade nine. And um, I have a question, a first problem, which is like, uh, how do, how can I deal with the students who are disres disrespectful and they're not uh, paying attention or like even answering my questions or like uh, being rude with me when I ask them? Yeah. Oh yeah, they test you, Sarah. In the beginning, first of all, the first year of teaching, not just the practicum, I don't consider it part of my years of experience. I always like, I, I have a 20 years of experience. I always say 20 minus one because that year doesn't count. I, I had to build a lot of, I put a lot of effort to be resilient and to be patient and to understand students are very smart. They try to trigger the teacher to, to test the patients. In the beginning, you have to be, let's say, firm, but not rigid. So deliver and, and give them, look into their eyes and try, okay, today we're doing this. I will listen to you later. So try to give them this these techniques and like, this is how we're going to do it. And this is how we're doing it. All right, Sarah, are you teaching in private or public sector in Kuwait? Is it in Kuwait or outside Kuwait? No, it, it, no it's, yeah, it's in Oman and it's a public school. Okay, yeah, public schools are different settings. You can expect everyone. Uh, and, and, um, and in the beginning, uh, they just want to test you as a teacher. They know you are new and and anything new for them is a subject for testing. Uh, later on, and this is always uh, the anecdote that I used to hear from my own students because I observe a practicum. In the beginning, I would be the counselor of my students. They call, they cry, they come to my office weeping and I have to buy a lot of uh, tissues and boxes that would be finishing in the first few weeks. And later on, I, I hear nothing, no complaining, nothing. And when I go to the schools, I see how they're blending very well. So in the beginning, it's very challenging write down the names, try to understand, go and seek uh, their, their teacher, the actual teacher. So you know uh, later on who is the special case and who, is, who needs uh, to be uh, monitored or always refer to the head of department and the actual teacher 
uh, on techniques on how they've controlled it. Thank uh, you Muhammad? So Muhammad okay. Abu Bakr? Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's a great source of knowledge you provided. Uh, I can't hear uh, you very well. Your voice is really low. Okay, am I audible to you? No. It is, but the voice is not that clear. Okay, my question. Can you type your question so I can read it? Because, yeah, it would be better. I, I, I'm looking at the chat right now. Fatma? Hello? Hi. Thank you very much for the really informative uh, presentation you had today. I have a question. Can I ask it? Sure. Um, actually, I've been teaching English for almost uh, 10 years, and the challenge that I was always dealing with is somehow uh, when I'm going to use somehow extra things in my classes, like extra materials, including, I don't know, using the projector or something, I normally run out of time. And I don't know how to deal with it because uh, somehow setting up all those things and then uh, getting a students in, engaged in my teaching is the big deal for me. Can you help? Sure, Fatma, thank you for this question. Okay, uh, there is what they call it the 5E model. I'll write it here in the chat so you can uh, search it. 5E five, five model. Uh -huh. uh, the 5E model is engage, elaborate, explain, evaluate, and uh, I forgot the fifth one. So, um, uh, first of all, you want to grab the attention, but don't take too long. Bell work, things that they get, uh, the, the routine that they can uh, be in, mm -hmm. and uh, create a routine. My students, in the beginning, I take, like, le let's say, I've wasted mm -hmm. almost two lectures in the college level right now, just to give instructions and just uh -huh. to put them on track. Later on, once they are in, uh, on track, it's easier for you to repeat while, and don't overstaff your lesson plan. Don't make it full fat, make it half, mm -hmm. let's say. So, mm -hmm. and break down things and things that you feel that it will this activity will put the students in a mess. Try to uh, make it more structured that you have the control instead of losing control. It's all about mm -hmm. how to have the control. You give them the freedom, but you are the still you still have the siege of controlling of this activity. So nobody is slipping away or down or mm -hmm. out. And this comes with a plan, a whole scheme, uh, schema plan from the beginning to the end. What am I going to deliver? I am, I am uh, obliged to cover four units. How will I cover four units? Bear in mind that I have low achievers, second language speakers, and all of that. Then find activities within their range place them within the lesson and break it down. So sometimes you feel like I've list I finished the lesson very quickly and mm -hmm. there is an extra time. And sometimes I feel like that lesson was a nightmare uh, because I I finished and it was chaos and the bell rang and, and I didn't I didn't do anything correctly. So you need to balance the timing, break it down, mm -hmm. practice it. Uh, when we do the lesson planning, always put the time. This activity will take five minutes. If they don't finish, you stop them. You need to have this control. Thank you very much. Sure. I sure. will. 
Sure. I know I've asked uh, Muhammad to write his question. Let me just see if he typed it. No. Uh, can you type it, Muhammad, until I answer you? We'll go to Ahmed. Ahmed. Okay, Ahmed seems doesn't answer. Abdullah. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Dr. Fatma. Uh, Hi, Abdullah, one of my students. <laughs> I was one of your students. I'm so happy to be here. It uh, gives me so many great memories from the past. Uh, professor, I want to ask a very important question. It's a problem sure. I'm going through right now, which is that I'm teaching grade 10 students. And mm -hmm. the English proficiency level of these students does not match the uh, expectations of the curriculum. So uh, there, I would say their level is that of an elementary school student, uh, student yeah. to be honest. So I am, I am very concerned uh, because whatever I am teaching, they are not processing because it demands way more than what they can showcase. What should I do? Okay. There has to be a supplementary uh, curriculum. And unfortunately, this is something uh, audience from outside Kuwait. Uh, this is a case because um, um, we have a, um, we have the, from first to fifth grade, students are being transferred without any failure. So they don't have the retention in the elementary level, which created a bigger problem for middle and of course high school. Um, bridging this gap, when, when they come to, for example, Abdullah, uh, they come to uh, them with an elementary knowledge because they passed with no rigid knowledge there is no constructive knowledge there so building it takes double or triple the amount that they uh, require uh, creating intensive um, you need Abdullah to do a diagnostic assessment. I know that they do in the beginning of the school year a diagnostic assessment. I don't know if they do it yearly or only based on the ninth grade. I'm not sure about this. But I know the English, the Arabic, and the math. They do diagnostic assessment every year. And you need to see and monitor. And I, I bet that they've answered most of the things right then try to give supplement. And uh, I know they've, uh, they've activated the Microsoft Teams recently. They just had a decree. Uh, yes, uh, correct. And we all yeah. already done so, the diagnostic. Uh, put, it, put, put those activities and try to give them interactive websites that will help them to achieve it. I know that's not going to cover everyone. And there are a lot that will be behind, but at least you will deliver the things while you are building your, uh, or you are progressing in the curriculum. Great, uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, Norm Norman? Thank you so much. Can you hear me? S excuse me? Can you hear me? As a... Yes, I can hear All you. Right. Thank you so much for the uh, presentation. I'm very really glad that I've attended that to your discussion today. Thank you so much again. So my question is uh, uh, a special case of, uh, of mine. I've been actually approached by one of the members of the administration of the school uh, I work in, and I've been asked whether I should accept the autistic student or not. Okay. So my question is uh, how to deal with this case and how to deal with students in my class if he's already followed the, I, I would say, the user of the I, I didn't hear the last part, I'm sorry. How uh, I you said deal? how to deal how to deal with the autistic student, okay? Who's got uh -huh. autism, and uh, uh, in the mid and the mount students who are the usual. That means normal students, okay? Yeah. Well, uh, let me tell you this. I I one of my classes. I ended up with forty students in the classroom right now, and it's a an, uh, writing class where I have to hop from one student to another. 
I had to adapt and it was not easy. Uh, adapting to your school environment. I mean, I taught middle school uh, classes. There were 25 and suddenly a decree changed that number to 45. And to have a 45 students in the classroom uh, was not easy. Um, and taking care of all the cases. So if you have those students coach, um, you, you need to set up a coaching system with the counselor. And it's not, some, some counselors are not very responsive, I know. Then you have to break it down into those extra supplement tools that we provide the students. Other than that, I'm not asking any teacher here to kill themselves because I know you today, today is Saturday and all of you are here to participate and to involve and to engage because you, you are seeking an answer. You wanna be perfectionist, don't be perfectionist. Because if we, no matter what, there is something that we're not gonna achieve. So work within your capacity. Other than that, you give the tools. If we, if my, I always tell my students, I am only a, um, an element in this process where you, you are the one who decides if you want to learn or not. So, you are part of the momentum of, and the the educational component. You cannot go beyond. You're, we're not superheroes. We are people, and I prefer to be people than a superhero. But thank you for raising that issue. And I know we want to reach out to every student, but sometimes we can't. And try to create the the bare minimum for them to kick them in the system so they can do it. You, we, we, didn't, we didn't succeed without, you know, without the willingness inside ourselves. Uh, okay. Let me just if answer Mohammed. If we could move a little faster because we still have seven people with questions and we're going to end in about 20 minutes. Okay, Muhammad, he asked me, how can ESL be beneficial for developing our skills for industrial work? Oh, uh, this is very uh, good question. Uh, whenever we introduce English language in our curriculum, we tell them the importance of the language, but we don't really tell them where they are in the future. That's why many of our graduates, they seek governmental work and they wait in queues for many years, uh, having on the other path, the private sector is in need of a, uh, those workers, whether they are engineers, teachers, or any type of field here in Kuwait, and the missing part and the missing element is the language. Uh, giving that note for students that if you are going to graduate with no English skills, if you don't build this capacity, uh, the waiting queue for your job will take up to years while if you have a good uh, proficient English, you'll get the job the next day. Giving them this intensives will click to them that, no, I will learn. I know a case of a student who grew up in the government system with a, a, two abusive parents. And then we, she was rescued. And now she works in the private sectors and she speaks four languages. And when I asked her, and she's like the, the age of my daughter is asked her, how did you learn? And she said, by watching movies, I memorized everything because I knew through education, I will survive. And now she's pioneering in engineering in a private sector. 
and she has a story to tell. So always tell your students, and um, just before telling your students, you as a teacher, you have a story to tell. We all have a story to tell. So uh, let's create, let's let's build from those challenges a success than just to, you know, worry about them. Um, again, we only give keys. We're not opening doors for anyone. They, it's their decision whether they want to open the door or not. So thank you, Mohammed, for your question. Yeah, they don't really understand. They don't see beyond. So you want to show them that this is, even if you're good in science or math, you cannot do it without language. Ahmed, uh, Ahmed? Ahmed? is still not able so um Aisha Aisha Al Harbi Hello Dr Fatima I have a reading club where I hold discussions so are the techniques and tips you mentioned work also for the discussions they work and for reading clubs this is now, you have to differentiate between formal education and informal education. Clubs would use and utilize some of the techniques from formal education. But again, uh, in informal settings, we have more freedom to create more things. So what I've, uh, what I've uh, overviewed in my slides were mostly for formal, but also can be used in informal education. You have more freedom, Aisha, to do more creative work than the actual settings. Now, all the challenges, Aisha, from the teachers, you'll see they are running out of time. They have to chase the curriculum and they have to look after like number of group of students and uh, with a, a specific certain deliverables. Good luck, Aisha. Aziz? Is that me? Yes. Hey, hey. Uh, hello. Um, thank you for the webinar slash lecture. Uh, um, it's nice to meet you, Dr. Fatima. I'm Abdul Aziz from Kuwait. I just graduated from Arab Open University in English literature. Wonderful. And my question is, um, what would you suggest or advise for someone after achieving their bachelor's, like to get further education while waiting in line for the queue, because you know some teachers take one, two, three years in Kuwait to get a job, like yeah. uh, an official one. So, what would you suggest while waiting, like uh, courses? I don't know, TSL, TFL, CELTA, anything uh, like that. Before the courses, yeah. Aziz, you need to uh, any uh, advice find in any spot to get yourself into the school setting. Uh, it's wonderful to get all the techniques, but once you are facing the students, you are you are the you are the victim actually. So in the beginning, uh, let let's say there are um, voluntary work where you are working with teachers, to deliver an informal setting of activity or um, competitions, get a, a sense of how students interact and how they work. Because no matter how much you're going to do, especially you, because you you graduated with literature, so you don't have any, um, let's say, the, the pedagogy, the, the learning aspect of how to deliver, this is very important. So get yourself into activities. I know in jazz liquid, I know um, LOYAC, they do a lot of volunteerly work where you work with the students. So try to get a hint, uh, even in the private sector, they have a lot of volunteerly work and there are a lot of uh, centers to do that. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much. There, there was a question. Yeah, here Abdullah Swaini, he said it provides voluntarily. So people are writing answers for you here, uh, Aziz. I see. The implementation of interactive uh, 
uh, interaction needs a certain level of target language. How would you deal with individual differences among students? Okay. Uh, whenever you do a screening for your students, you will notice over time that this student, their proficiency level is mm -hmm. zero. This student, so create a rubric. Four is profession, three is so-so, two is uh, in the, let's say in the middle or the average one, they are um, very low and zero are like completely wiped off. So you want to work within that. Let the four level of English teach the zero while you are helping the two and the three to achieve, to, to build their capacity. Break them down, work with them. Students are very smart. Use them, involve them. They are your tools to deliver your lesson. Instead of just putting all the effort on your chest, try to break it down. Don't do it in the beginning of the semester because you don't know your students yet. Even if you do diagnostic and all of that by the, let's say the first two quizzes, you will have a sense who's good, who's bad, who's, who's in need, and then work it out. So for me, I wait until like the third or fourth week, a month, and then I start to distribute and help the students and work with them and use them. And actually, they they do a lot of things until until college level. They are they are your army. So uh, let's go for Shema. Shema. Shema Muhammad. Okay, Sadiq. Sadiq. Or Ahmed. I think I tried to. Answer all the questions. We passed them. <laughs> you passed the time, but I really enjoyed answering all the questions. And thank uh, you. Thank you so much, Dr. Fatma. This has been such an informative session. Uh, and inshallah, we can have you back again. Or maybe sure. you'll present at our uh, in conference in November. Uh, and we are having a symposium on February the 2nd, but it will be on campus here at Gust. Um, and people will have to uh, attend in person. The conference will be hybrid, though. Again, thank you. And this is just to remind you that you will receive your certificate if you were present for at least 45 minutes. And Zoom makes a record of this. And those certificates will be sent out uh, tomorrow and on uh, Monday. Now, people had asked about our next one. You can always find, if you go to Tiesel Quate's home and click on webinars, and here it is. And see, our videos are available here in PowerPoints. And uh, once the webinar for today is formatted. It will be here. And if Dr. Fatma is willing to share her uh, her slides, I will yes, also- I will share. send you the slides, yes. Uh, because you. I know people had asked I, for that. Yeah, I, I, I put a lot of tips and I, want, I would love oh, to yeah. deliver- and They were very yeah. good tips. Sure. Now on November the 3rd, we will have another webinar and it is enhancing language teaching to Gen, uh, Gen Z. And that will be put up later. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate your at uh, attending and look forward to seeing you on November the 3rd. Thank you, Dr. Fatma. Thanks. Nice meeting you all. Bye-bye. Good luck. Bye.